Welcome back to the Halo Reach Winter Championships here live in Columbus, Ohio. We're about to see the FFA semifinals that you guys voted for. I'm Bravo along with Walshy. Now, Dave, before we jump into this FFA 2, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the players in FFA 1 and give respect to them. So, Royal 2, Formal, Snipe Down, Reliable, Roy, Russo, Snakebite, and Fantasy, they're playing on another station inside the venue. Um, Royal 2 is definitely uh, one of the stories of our weekend. We were expecting him to go far. I mean... All those players have a great chance of taking it. I really want to see Fancy. I had not heard of him. He's a known, like, new and up, an up and comer. Mm -hmm. And so I was excited to see how he'd play. But the fans decided, I think it was about 56 to 44%. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it was really tough. But um, let's talk about the lineup we got going on for this free for all that we are going to watch. So right now what you guys are seeing on the graphic is that the top 16 left in the free-for-all. Uh, we're going to be looking to see who can emerge through this. It'll be very interesting to see, Dave, if either Fantasy or Akuzum, those two names that we do not recognize and on the Deathy. list. And Deathy. Deathy yeah. is also a new face. True, sure, yeah. Deathy also uh, a third player here. So it's surprising to see not all pros in these semifinals. You know, it's really good to see uh, in the community. We've talked about it all day on Friday. But these players now, you know, they're going to have a name for themselves. They've got tens of thousands of people watching from home and a crowded pack here. So it's uh, really nice to see. Absolutely. And every season you see new up-and-comers that just emerge on the circuit. You just happen with Snipe Down, happen with Strong Side. Mm -hmm. You see even names today like Formal, a lot of these SQ members. Yeah. They just come out of nowhere and just shock the circuit. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah. I'd like to see how these guys play, and I'd like to see where they are at the end of the season. Right. So in this specific FFA, we're going to have Akuzum, Strong Side, Assault, Deathy, Best Man, Ogre 2, Enable, and Maniac. Dave, personally, who do you think is going to be at the top of this free-for-all at the end of the game? <laughs> Every time I choose somebody, they do bad. It's oh, just so like, I've always been like, Ola's going to do great. And so I'm still going to go with my gut feeling. I... I'm pulling for strong side. He's he's my number one choice right here. Okay, awesome. I'm going to be looking for uh, big things from Best Man. As many of you guys know, uh, he had several first place finishes yesterday. I believe only one second place. Only finish. one second place is correct. Yeah. So a uh, great day from him yesterday. He's been playing a lot of free for all uh, these past few weeks in the off season. Uh, so congrats to Best Man. But also we can't overlook Ogre Two. Ogre Two. Uh, you know, obviously uh, player, incredibly play smart player. You Super can't say clutch enough. on that classic series. Yeah. You cannot say anything more than he's just won five national champions. You know. Greatest player of all time. And we're jumping right into this match. We have a mix of veterans. We got some people familiar from last season, such as Maniac, Enable, and Assault. And we got some newcomers, such as Deathy and Akuzum. Let's see how this plays out. Right now, now, now Dave, so much tournament uh, you know, history under your belt. You've played free-for-all and 4v4 at so many different tournaments throughout history of Halo. Tell me, is it uh, you know, a little bit weird? Is there a lot of changes that need to be made? These guys just came off a full day of 4v4. Are they kind of changing their play style? Is there anything different they might do coming into this free-for-all match? Um, it's got to be a little difficult for strong side of straight ribbon. I mean, they just had a tough loss right there. Obviously, side cares mostly about 4v4s. He's a big team player, so he can't be too happy coming off that loss. Right, uh, it's going to be you know, really a test of his uh, you know, mental ability to just move past that loss and go ahead and focus Picking on Picking up this. the double. Let's see if he gets this. That's the side I like to see. There we go. Getting uh, right there, getting those first three kills of the game. That'll put him right there, uh, right around second place here now, behind Best Man. Good start uh, for Best Both Man. Both our choices, man. Like, yeah, there we go. What so, do we know? Uh, I think we, we know, know everything. everything. Yeah. <laughs> We know everything, uh, so it would be really cool if we saw those two players at the top. But let's not forget about Akuzum. This is a brand new face, guys. We're jumping on with him. I uh, see him hanging around the health packs and the flags. And I wondered what we're going to see here, because we might see a lot of clashing personalities uh, and play styles is what I mean here, that they might all want to do the same thing. They've gotten so far in free-for-all, Dave, we might see the same kind of play styles from several of these players. Yes, I'm, I'm curious to see what sense Akuzum is on. He seems to be very steady with a shot. Mm -hmm. Doesn't seem to whip it around too much. From my from my guitar right now, it seems like he's on two or three sets. Yeah. So once he locked on one of these players, you can assume he's not going to miss. I agree. I would definitely say four at the highest. I play around that same range myself. I um, mean, it looks like he has a very steady shot. Not. Yeah. not I can't a, tell until he does like a 180. Once he does 180, I'll get a better gauge of how what sense he's at. But right now, I just can't tell if it's super steady or if it's a super low sense. Right there, assuming that he was actually turning when he lifted right there, it would definitely be a two or a three sensitivity. Yes. Something, another minute detail that's really interesting to talk about. I'm really glad you brought that up. Dave, because that's such a big detail in a free-for-all. 
you're playing with players who know how to shoot so well. He's got yep. seven pros, excuse me, he's got five pros in this free-for-all, and they're all going to know how to shoot really well. They also also just came off of a full day of shooting, so uh, they're going to be have their shot on, and he's going to have to be ready to match that. And one of the things you can do to take advantage of, you know other players' sensitivities, you can take advantage of different battles. For example, I know I'm going against a low-sense player, and I'm a higher-sense player. I want to get in a vertical battle with that person. Right. I want to hug a wall, have that person re either right above me or below me, because I know that they cannot turn as fast as I can, and I'm going to have the advantage during those fights. Whereas those long range steady, those steady fights, mm -hmm. you probably are not going to, they're not going to miss a shot on you. Right, they, start, they, they, they have a little bit far. of a technical advantage. Yes, exactly. So that's something you always use to advantage. You're not thinking about that sort of stuff always in game. But I know, for example, anytime I'm going against like Pistol or something like that in a close range fight, and he's vertical on me, I get away from that situation because I cannot fight him in that situation. Right, exactly. So you're going to want to be jumping up off of a platform or maybe dropping down on those players to really force them to look at a different part of the map as yes. they're fighting you. A very interesting uh, point you bring up there. Taking a look at the scoreboard now. Uh, we have right assault, now. but this is the wrong camera. This is not assault in the picture, picture just to be clear. Right, all right, thank you for that. Uh, so we have uh, 14, uh, Assault leading, now best man 12, and Akuzum actually in third. That's great to see here. Uh, so now I'm really interested I'm to see. I'm assuming this is Deathy, by the way, in the picture in picture, and I would love to switch over to him at some point and see how he plays. Because mm -hmm. these new players, it's just brand new to me. I've never seen either of these players before. And now we see a big surprise here, actually. Maniac uh, down at the bottom with only five kills here, with a le oh, six kills now, excuse me, while the leader has 14. So uh, it's going to be hard to bounce back from that. Seven kills is no small margin in a free-for-all, especially when you're playing on two unlim Not unlimited amounts. And I think Maniac almost came in with the wrong mindset. I, I was walking past him on backstage. He was like, I'm just happy to be in the top 16. I was like, that's not the mindset you got had. You're already here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. See, I want to hear the cocky Maniac is like, I'm taking first for sure. Yeah, exactly. Um, I'm <laughs> definitely surprised to hear that because you got to think every player worked so hard to get here. Uh, the other thing might be that he was just happy, you know, to use this to get his team a great seed. So maybe he's just satisfied with that. But there is a large pass purse, I believe, $1,500 uh, for first. Maniac and Selfless do not go in the same <laughs> sense for me. So when you're saying he's happy for his team to get there, he's like, I care these guys. Everyone yeah. has their Maniac uh, for impersonation, but mine is by far the worst. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't know who you were talking about there. So yeah, best man, uh, he was hanging out top middle, but now we're jumping up over the navel. He's got 13 kills. We're going to see if he can lock down this top gold. Now, Dave, a lot of times we see players who are hanging out around gold. Nice job to finish Akuzum not giving up there. We have a lot of players who hang around top gold, and they maybe don't get this kind of action that enables getting right now. In a situation like that, should the players be hesitant, you know, and kind of push away from gold, or should they be patient? Should they wait around gold and wait for those kills to come to them? You do want to wait to a degree. Um, so in some cases, you can just push those top there a bit, get different angles on flag, and see more action from there. You're not going to go too long without seeing someone get gold, because someone can always spawn bottom gold, right. someone can lift landings, and someone can be at either flag. So in some cases, if you're, if you're rotating from landing to landing, mm -hmm. not finding any action, you can always just push for top center, and you'll for sure find a fight somewhere. Right, I'm glad you said that, because we talked about yesterday, so many of those spawns are around the health pack, around main ramp, bottom bases. So when you push top mid, you really give yourself a really a wide variety and a very varied group of angles that you can use to shoot uh, into the bottom of the bases and really try to catch maybe a double kill here uh, or, you know, clean up a kill here and there. And once again, you see Enable wait and see if someone's going to get that bottom gold spawn and just get that back snag. But like I said, it's going to be so rare that you're going to go from landing to landing to not find fight. So you'll see Enable most likely rotate back over to red landing here. And if he does not see anyone, probably go back to blue landing once again. So it's so rare that you're going to go landing to landing and not find anything. And that's why I was just giving you the example that you can always push top center and get a fight if you are desperate for one. Mm -hmm. So our top four right now, strong side, enable assault, best man. We are here. Uh, I believe this is assault POV. Once again, I'm having trouble with the picture, but that's not a problem. Uh, so right now, strong side, assault, uh, enable best man. That's 24, 23, 21, 21. So really close here. Obviously, uh, top four going to advance to that final. So that coveted fourth spot, we're going to want to keep an eye on that for the rest of these nine minutes. Could you repeat who is in first and who called him to win this free frog? Game? I, I believe, Dave, if I was correct, that would be strong side in first. He's now got 25 kills, and I think that was you who that's called right. him first. That's right. My memory right. sometimes. That, yeah, no, me. it slipped you, and yeah. that's not really. Thank you. Thank that's you. not a problem. My pick uh, is right now: <laughs> best man tied for third with 22 kills. You see him crouching uh, around the uh, bottom of the. B bottom gold, but remember, it's all about the top four here. So we still have Enable still holding on to that, Mo just moving into third. Uh, going to be interesting to see if one of these Akuzum actually uh, in fifth place. Maybe he can sneak in to this MFA Finals and really make a name for himself. I would love to see it. I would love to see one of the up and comers. And like we said, we are competing for $1,500 first prize here. So besides, uh, we're in the semifinals. So after this round, they have to play against the top four of the players. Once again, I'll repeat them. 
Royal 2, Formal, Snipe Down, Reliable, Roy, Russo, Snake Bite, and Fantasy. So either way, this, this round alone is difficult, but when you combine a lot of these players, such like Royal 2, Formal, and Roy, just I, I mean, there's so many big names list. on That these entire list. list I could just repeat again, and there's so many big names. Right, so remember, uh, any of you who might just be joining us, this is the FFA semifinals, as Dave was saying. Uh, my name is Bravo. I'm joined by David Walshy Walsh, a uh, Halo legend here. We're waiting to see who will be in the FFA finals tonight. Uh, we've had a really exciting last few days, and we're rejoined here by the free-for-all action, which is always good to see. Uh, now 28 kills uh, the leader. I believe that's still strong side in first Number place and assault. Really unfortunate positions. Like, right there, it's so rare that you can see someone under the base or top of the base, like, fight that to the death. They're going to assume that, all right, I don't want to get this guy weak, and he's just going to pour it up. Yeah, people just seem to be singling him out. Just unfortunate play after unfortunate play right there. And one thing we saw just now was best man shooting into the bottom of a base from bottom gold. He was shooting and crouching at the same time. Now that Bloom's gone, a lot of people had superstitions about crouching with Bloom, Dave. Uh, is there a big reason that best man might have been crouching there besides the radar top gold? Best man might just be lazy. I don't know. <laughs> I definitely think that could be it. Uh, now, Strongside's lead getting uh, shrunk a little bit now. You have Assault and Enable both behind him only by two kills. Uh, it's going to come down to the wire here. No player yet. Dave has really so spread jumpy. out. jumpy. That's one thing I remember about him, especially in Halo 3. Mm -hmm. He was one of the first people that just, like, bumper jumper all around the map and made it so difficult to get those kills. And you can see Akuzum getting so annoyed about trying to get that finish right there. He jumped behind the pillar, kept jumping, right. and that's something that's going to throw Kuzma off for a little bit. Oh, without a doubt. These uh, top players uh, are going to know little tricks and habits that maybe might uh, you know, surprise uh, these newer players here. We'd love to see uh, either you know Fantasy, Akuzum, Deathy, uh, or <coughs> any of these new players really uh, sneak into this free-for-all finals, uh, definitely getting it themselves. Uh, a, a name for themselves and some money. rough game. That's what we're watching right now. He had a nice five right there, but you can see he was definitely distraught after get those first couple shots of Assault and losing that fight. It's very uncharacteristic of yeah. a top pro to get those first couple shots and then end up losing it. Yeah, and also AC. Maniac hanging yeah. out down there with Ogre 2. Uh, also surprising to see. You wonder if maybe they're a bit mentally drained from the day today. They had to focus a lot. Ogre 2 coming off that 50-49 game 5. You know, yes. definitely uh, mentally straining, obviously in a good way. They came away with a win. He's got to be happy. His morale's high, but he could be tired. And they're both in a situation where right now, all teams already been seeded by free for all. They're not playing for any points for the team. Right. They realize that only, you know, top. You have to get the next round and get paid. And right now, they're both 10 kills outside, close to 10 kills outside of getting in top four. So they both realize, all right, I got to charge around and make something happen. Oh, yeah. My only possible chance of getting this next round. And if they don't make anything happen soon. They're both realistic. They're both like, all right, I'm just not going to make it to this next round. That's just how free throw goes sometimes. If you're not playing your best, you're yeah, not expect to beat the best. Yeah, especially this late at night, it can be a little bit, you know, you get down on yourself, you don't worry about it. Certainly not stressing about it. You know, they're not going to get uh, frustrated, but they realize that they might not be winning this game, and they kind of slow down the pace of the game, uh, whereas other players might really be getting into it. As we just checked, let's take a look at the fourth and spit spot. First off, I don't think either of them are going to be letting Five down. Remaining. Um, Obviously, the players that are most money hungry in this, they're, you see all this, we're going out for the top four, for the naval strong side, assault, and best man. So these players are most, are most likely advancing. Akuzum still only a couple kills yeah, out of fourth two kills place. behind best man Akuzum, so we're going to uh, obviously keep an eye on him. Right now, we're watching best man, uh, free-for-all player, who was so successful on Friday to get him here. Uh, so props to him. Uh, he's going to win top middle. It seems that every time we go to his screen, Dave, he's on top middle. Yeah, it's reminiscent of some of my style of play in Halo 2. Um, there's so many different times where I'd go, you know, from pink or car, and it's sometimes very unexpected. Obviously, they have grenade launcher up there, so sometimes you have to pay attention, but mm -hmm. for the most part, you don't really have, like, no reason to fight a guy top center unless you're the one that's top gold or you're on bridge because you're not going to finish it. Fighting right. landing to top center, you're just asking to get a guy weak and have him get finished off from someone else. So even though he's out in the open like that, Look at Bestman just even looked away from Enable. He's like, I don't need to put shots on this guy that I'm not going to finish. Why do unnecessary damage when I'm not going to reap the benefits of it? Right, and the reason behind that is we talked about it a lot in that 4v4. Top middle offers so much control on this map, Dave. Uh, excuse me, so much cover on this map. You see Akuzum there. Uh, probably could have used those glass shields. Very easy to duck away from cover, which makes it such an important position in 4v4, you know, on the other yeah. hand. And right there, best man proved me wrong. He felt, look it, I can shoot this guy. I feel like I can get the five off before this guy looks away. But in most cases, if that, if Akuzum knew where those shots were coming from, he would have been able to just avoid best man. Right. So now 47 is the leader. Uh, it's Assault. He just got another triple kill. He's going to go ahead and try to get the over. He's unable to do so. Uh, so now the top scores are 48, 43, 42, 40. Uh, that's Assault, Enable, Strong Side, and then best man Akuzum now uh, down by a few. 
Let's see, once again, he is down by uh, three kills now, still hanging in there with best man. This is best perfect. I'd love to see a Kuzum because right here, I want to see how he plays out the situation. If I was in a Kuzum shoes, every single death I get, I would be flipping through my death screen to see where best man is because that's who he has to worry about catching up to. And that's what you can tell by someone who has much more tournament experience. Like, all right, they know how to play three ball. You don't have to worry about the number one. Look at best man. He lifts up and he knows a Kuzum's his biggest threat. Right now, he's looking at Ogre 2 on his death screen. You have to take every little advantage you can get. Right, right now, if he was looking at Best Man on death screen, he would know where he's at. He knows, all right, I can put some shots on Best Man across the map. Obviously, I might not get this kill, but right now, I got to make sure Best Man does not get killed because he's right. the one who I have to catch up to. Right, I'm Dave, and that's such a good point. I was just taking a look at Best Man's screen, and he was flipping right through, and he got right through Akuzum's death screen. So right there, you have a could tournament veteran. switch over veteran. to Best Man to see this? And watch when he dies. He's going to switch over to Akuzum's screen, Here's if I'm correct. See right here, right and look there, at, he looks and he looks for Akuzum. And watch, if he gets the ability, he's gonna shoot bottom gold, put some shots on Akuzum, if right. possible. And if he, you know, he, at least he knows where he's at. So if he is within a reasonable distance from him, he'll put shots on him and make sure that Akuzum does not get a kill. That's so smart in best man's play. Yeah, now he's up by five. Uh, great call there. He did look bottom gold. Akuzum had already ported through gold, yep. but best man right there showing his tournament experience. He's a veteran. He knows to do that. I'm so glad you picked that out, Dave, that Akuzum was not looking at best man's screen. Yep. That's such an important factor. I I'm hope really he goes back and watches and learns from this if he does not have this drum because yeah, that's such a big deal. And I'm sure a lot of the viewers at home who are considering participating in FFA this year, you know, they have learned. Uh, quite a bit watching this alone. Akuzum actually just picked up a triple kill. To how close did that bring him to uh, Best Man? Let's take a look at He's only screen. within one kill of Best That's Man, right. so we need to see Best Man or Akuzum right here at the end. Uh, Going to be really close. Uh, coming down to the wire, 45-45, I think I just saw on this death screen. Let's see, 46-46 uh, now. We're going to be looking at this coveted fourth spot uh, who is going to take home uh, possibly take home the money and get into these FFA Finals, which are going to be coming up next here, live from the MLG Winter Championships in One Columbus, One thing to keep Ohio. in mind is first through fourth in this is not as relevant since the free-for-all points are not going towards this. Right. But at the same time, they just have to get this next round, and that's where they have to go all big. Right, so what you're saying is that, that as long as you're top four, yes. that's really it. So uh, exactly. it's, it's, as long as you're in the top four, you so don't worry about anything else. So on the cake for Assault right now. He has no fear of being knocked out of this, One and just take home a little more confidence, you know, going this next round, seeing how he's winning it. But the next round is the most important for him. Right, so now 47-47, best man in Akuzum. Best man going to Devi's screen there. Interesting, he didn't take advantage of the death screen there. Yep. But we're going to see he's going to push top middle as we've seen him do so many times throughout this game. Uh, sees Ogre too. He's going to want to make sure every battle he gets in that he has a chance of getting the kill. Yes, agreed. And see, he pushes these guys. He's just looking for the angle. He does a frustrating charge over top goal. Hopefully he can get this kill. That's going to be huge now. 47 kills for him and 48 for best man. 47 for Akuzum. We're taking a look at both screens for you guys so we can keep you up to date in these last 20 seconds of the game. Now, uh, 48. I not like grenade launch from top goal. That's such a bad position for it. Well, so Akuzum gets a kill stolen. Now 49 for best man, 47 for Akuzum. I think it looks like best man's going to be able to take this. Uh, 10 seconds left in the match. Let's take a look here. 49, 48, best man over Akuzum. Uh, he spawns here. He's going to have right. to shoot pretty Kuzum quick. Spawns. He's got to get oh, a fish. He might did have not been get it. Did not get, did it. Not get it. And that's frustrating. Now you see a little uh, smile on his face. If he had a one more second, he might have been able to clean up that ring Think about those small changes kill. I was trying to point out. Imagine if one of those times he stopped Best Man from getting a kill right. by doing cross map damage mm -hmm. or killing Best Man in one of those situations. Right. That would have been a difference. It could have made a passing. huge difference just using his death screen one time, let alone every time that he could have had that opportunity. So really uh, taking advantage of certain things, obviously death screen is still a huge factor in 4v4, but possibly an even bigger factor here in free for all. And so our four champions in this last match were Assault, Enable, Strong Side, and Best Man. Right. Enable going positive 15. So it shows that Enable obviously likes to stay alive um, it was extremely close first off, 61, 59, 54, and 49. So quite a big gap between Enable and Assault, and mm -hmm. obviously the bomb half, best man the strong side. But um, I think yeah, also we especially gotta mention, for uh, fourth, fifth, and sixth, that's yeah. where the big close match Also that, uh, yeah, that Nas <laughs> performance, looking at that Ogre 2 with 47. Think about it, two more kills there. He had less deaths than best man. Two more kills. Uh, and me. most assists. Yeah, and he would have been in that top four. So Ogre 2 really climbing back at the end of that match. Almost made it back in after we saw him in last place throughout that game. Uh, so props to Ogre 2 for almost coming back there. So uh, the story right there, as he said, is assault. Enable uh, best man going ahead and advancing there. So we're going to go ahead and get to the FFA finals coming up next year. I'm Bravo. This is Walshy, and we are going to a quick commercial break.